On a recent episode of Julie Noted, I gave you my reactions to the first GOP primary debate that took place just about a few weeks ago. And I went through each of the candidates and gave a two to three sentence synopsis of my thoughts. When it came to Vice President Mike Pence, I talked about how out of touch he seemed with the American people and with the moment that we are facing right now. For instance, he talked a lot about Jesus Christ and his heavenly father and putting his hand on the Bible, taking the oath of office. And I am certainly not trying to disparage him for his religious belief. I am a woman of faith. I have profound respect and reverence for Judeo-Christian values. But a lot of people, rightly or wrongly, mostly wrongly, feel that that approach is a bit aggressive. And they feel like it confirms a caricature or a stereotype of conservatives as being kind of religious fanatics. And I felt at least that Mike Pence overdid it in that debate, not that he should be ashamed of his faith, but to reference it almost in every uh, answer shows that he may not be as in tune with what the populace, both liberal and conservative, are feeling in this moment. Additionally, there was an exchange between Vice President Pence former Vice President Pence, and Vivek Ramaswamy, where Vivek was saying that part of the problem in our country now and the reason for so many mental health issues is that we have a crisis of American identity. We no longer feel proud to be an American. We no longer know what it means to be an American. And Mike Pence, in an effort to shoot back at Vivek, said, you know, Vivek, I think that the American identity is doing just fine and that we should be proud to be an American. And it was a little bit of a no-blank Sherlock moment. I mean, of course, there are many reasons to be proud to be an American. Of course, there's nothing wrong with being an American, but that wasn't the point. The point was that right now, it's under assault. And the very fact that it is a good thing to be an American is something that is being tarnished. So it just seems like he was a bit off on the moment that we're living in now. Well, there is a recent Wall Street Journal editorial, by recent I mean today, published September 6, 2023, in which Mike Pence kind of again conveys that he's a little bit or a lot of bit out of touch with the conservative moment. This article is entitled The Republican Time for Choosing. Voters need to reject populism unmoored from conservative principles. And it is important to note that this was a uh, this this article was adopted from a speech that former Vice President Pence delivered Wednesday in New Hampshire. Before we get to this editorial, I'd like to quickly tell you about my pillow. I use all my pillow products, the my pillow, the Giza Dream bed sheets, the my slippers, the my towels, and you can too and get them at a discount with the promo code Hartman. For a limited time, you'll get 60% off of the Giza Dream bed sheets that comes with a 60-day money back guarantee and a 10-year warranty. You will receive a set for as low as $39.99. And for a limited time with any purchase, you'll get Mike Lindell's soft cover book free with the promo code Hartman, my last name, spelled H-A-R-T-M-A-N. Just go to MyPillow.com and click on the radio listener square or call 1-800-566-6745 and use the promo code Hartman to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products, which yours truly, as I said, uses and loves. Reading. From Vice President Pence's editorial this morning, quote, Republican voters face an important choice next year. It will determine both the fate of our party and the course of our nation. What is that, Mike Pence? What is that? Will we be the party of conservatism, he says, or will we follow the siren song of populism unmoored to conservative principles? The divide between these two factions is unbridgeable. Conservatives like me believe that man's rights come from God in nature, not from the state. Like our founders, we know the imperfect nature of men and women and that granting them them unlimited power imperils liberty. That is why we have a brilliant system of checks and balances, divisions of authority, co-equal branches of government and sovereign state governments. Conservatives understand that to advance an agenda on behalf of the American people, we must work through this system. This comes to the crux of his argument. For decades, conservatism's ideological rival has been liberalism. The radical left has taken the Democratic Party and thrown it into the abyss of a 
progressive socialist woke climate agenda. But today, another strain of this ideology challenges conservatism from within for control of the Republican Party, populism. A populist movement, he writes, is now rising in the Republican Party. This growing faction would substitute our faith in limited government and traditional values for an agenda stitched together by personal grievances and performative outrage. So let's pause there. Mike Pence talked earlier in this editorial about conservative principles, which he says are different than populist conservative principles. He talked about the inherent flawed nature of the human being, why we can't give them total power, that our rights come from God, not from the state, that limited government in the most amount of personal lib liberty is the desirable modus operandi of our government. How is that different from what populist conservatives believe? Let's just cut to the chase here. It seems like he is levying a charge against Donald Trump and those who voted for Donald Trump because that is the face of conservative populism. It's Donald Trump. He doesn't come out and say Donald Trump by name, but as I'm going to show you later in the article, he says, quote, a leading candidate said this, and then you Google that quote and you see that that leading candidate was Donald Trump. So again, let's just call it what it is here. It seems like my, Mike Pence is writing an editorial coming against Trumpism and populism. The vast majority of people who supported Donald Trump believe in these conservative values that Mike Pence say are in opposition to their populist beliefs. I mean, conservatives who voted for Donald Trump totally believe that human beings are flawed and that our powers from, for, come from God and that we need a limited government. And again, it just shows that, that, that Mike Pence is, is not in tune with the American people. Now, if he wants to go after Donald Trump as a person, as a leader, some of the things that Trump says, the ways that he at least verbally tries to challenge our institutions and modes of government, totally legit. But to say that populist conservatism is not real conservatism, that's not true. In fact, that's actually insulting to many people who do consider themselves to be populist conservatives. Populism is not antithetical to conservative values. That's not what it is. Populism is, is antithetical to establishment and elite. Populism encompasses this idea that your political positions and the people that you vote for ought to represent the realities and the needs of the people. The biggest example of this populist anti-establishment position was Donald Trump's America First campaign. This flew in the face of really the history of the past 60 years of conservatism. Conservatives over the past few decades in the United States have been interventionists looking abroad to increase American power. That was our whole misadventure in Vietnam, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, some argue Korea. I think that we were right to be in Korea. But putting that aside, we can all agree that it was once the position of the establishment Republican Party to go abroad and Donald Trump was really the first GOP candidate who said, no, we are getting ourselves into trouble by going into these other countries and we ought to be focusing on ourselves because clearly our country is not doing well. How is that somehow going against liberty and the principles of conservatism? It's different than the conservative position that the Republican Party has held but it's not going against the principles of conservatism itself. It's not attacking conservatism. It's, it's attacking establishment and the accepted inherited opinions of the elite and the people who have been in charge of this party who say that that is the direction that we ought to go in. Continuing with Vice President Pence, again, it's amazing. The, these opinions are unsubstantiated, and he doesn't provide any examples. If you're going to come out against something, be bold, Vice President Pence. I'm willing to listen to you, but tell us what you mean. It's very weird. He says Republican populists would abandon American leadership on the world stage, embracing a posture of appeasement in the face of rising threats to freedom. Where is that appeasement in the face of rising threats to freedom? We're very pro-free speech, very anti-censorship. We are pro, you know, or anti, excuse me, having 
the government dictate what cars you can drive, what light bulbs you can have in your house. We're anti this, this idea that there needs to be a essentially de facto government alongside our government, people like Anthony Fauci telling us what to do. All of these threats to our liberty, people who voted for Donald Trump, when I say we, I mean conservatives in general, combat that. How, how do people who are populist want to appease the threat of liberty? Frankly, it's ridiculous. Republican populists would erode our constitutional norms. This is where he gets into Donald Trump. Quote, a leading candidate this year who, doesn't, who he doesn't name called for, quote, the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution, while his imitators, his reveals part of it, it's not Nikki Haley, have demonstrated willingness to brandish government power to silence critics. Okay, that quote that he just cited was from Donald Trump uh, about a year ago in December of 2022. He put out this tweet on, on Truth Social where he was saying that the 2020 election was so corrupt and so rigged that, quote, there, it required a termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. He was saying we should not allow anything like this to happen. We have to combat it, even if on paper it's not right. Now, look, you can agree or disagree with that. There are many legitimate arguments for both. Clearly, there were improprieties in the 2020 election. And those who say, wait a minute, we can't just ignore that. They have a point. And those who are saying, wait, we can't just go against the constitutional norms, they also have a point. But the point is, with Mike Pence, tell us your point. You're hiding behind this, oh, a leading candidate said this. Tell us who the leading candidate was. It was the person who you served for as vice president. It was the administration that you were a part of. And it just seems awfully convenient that now Mike Pence is trying to distance himself. While meanwhile, in the most recent GOP presidential debate, he said, I am very proud of our record in the Trump-Pence administration. He has every right to go against Donald Trump, as anybody else does. There are many, many legitimate arguments to be levied against this individual. But be a leader and actually tell us who you are talking about and what you mean instead of these vague accusations about conservatives who are populist, apparently just succumbing to personal grievances and wanting to appease threats to liberty. Finally, in the, in the last part of his editorial, he says, quote, Republican populists would have us trade in our time-honored principles for passing public opinion. That isn't a trade I'm willing to make. I'm an unapologetic conservative who believes in strong national defense. Okay, populist conservatives believe in that. Limited government, populist conservatives believe in that. Traditional, and that traditional values, also something populist conservatives believe, must guide our nation as much today as they have guided our party for the past 50 years. Should the new populism of the right seize and guide our party, the GOP, as we have long known it, will cease to exist. Take with that what you will. Thank you very much for being here. Please hit the subscribe button down below so that you can stay notified with every new Dennis and Julie, Timeless, and Julie Noted episode that is posted. Take care, and I'll see you soon.